What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke and today we're making one of my favorite recipes for the entire year. It's how I start off every year. Today we're making that classic prosperity and health meal. I don't know about the health part, but <laughs> it definitely makes you feel good when you're eating it. Today we're going to be cooking greens, cornbread, black eyed peas, and poke chops. Y'all stick around because we're going to be getting into that right now. Make sure that your sink is clean and then we're gonna get some water in there and put our greens into the sink. Uh, you just wanna spread them out, open them up a little bit. We're doing this so we can soak them and get some of the dirt off. Uh, a lot of times nowadays, the greens will be pre-cleaned. Just put them in some water, shuffle them around a little bit and then let them soak for about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, something like that. Then we're just gonna drain those greens and start taking the spines out. Uh, this takes a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. Just go ahead and do it. Those spines will not cook down very tender. The next thing we're going to do is get about half a stick of butter in there and then pop it with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic, and some Cajun seasoning. I'm using Lane's because that's my jam. Cut up about half an onion, get it in there with those greens and that seasoning. That way we know those greens are going to be popping full of flavor. Wash them down a little bit. I like to rinse all my seasoning down into the greens so that it can sort of start to break down. And uh, when it starts to boil, really work its way into the greens. Next thing we're going to do is get out about three cloves of garlic, get those separated, get open our salted pork, get it all cut up and ready to go. Once our water comes up to a boil, we're going to remove the lid, reduce the heat on the stove, and give it a stir to make sure that everything's incorporated. I like to add a little bit of red wine vinegar to my greens just to give it a little bit of extra flavor and tartness. Let's get some water into a large pot for our black eyed peas, then we're going to Open them up and give them a short soak. These aren't the type that need to soak overnight, so if you get overnight soaked peas, you're going to need to do that. Add a little bit of salt to the soak. About 10 minutes is what I'm going to do, and those can just sit. Let's go ahead and check on those greens one more time. Make sure we're stirring them every once in a while. Man, those are looking fantastic. Oh, the smell. We got to get smell of vision I'm telling y'all. Once you've got that done, add a few pats of butter to your beans and start heating them up. Um, this is going to not take very long, but we're going to bring them to a boil and let that boil for about 5 to 10 minutes. After it's been boiling for about 5 or 10 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that heat down to a slow simmer. I thought this was sort of mesmerizing. I don't know what y'all think, but that's, uh, I don't know, it kind of makes me dizzy almost. <laughs> But once we've got that boil going, it's time to reduce the heat. Make sure that you don't walk away from the pot at this point in time because it creates a foam and that will boil over on you. Make sure that you monitor your peas because they will soak up a lot of the water and I had to add a little bit extra to mine. Now we're going to go ahead and get some vegetable oil into our cast iron skillets for our cornbread. I always have an extra small little cast iron skillet. That way, if I have any extra batter for the cornbread, I can put it in there. Then we're going to slice up an onion, dice it up real nice. This is going to be for our black eyed peas. We're going to 
sear these in a skillet. So about half an onion and a couple cloves of garlic is what I'm doing right here. Just mince it up real fine. That way it cooks down and is just packed full of flavor. Once you've got that all cut up, move it over to the side and we'll be searing that down and browning it in a pan with a little bit of olive oil and a pat of butter to keep the oil from burning. Get that stuff in there. This is one of the best smells in the world when this stuff is cooking down. I know I love it and it's fun to watch it brown. Once that's done, we're going to give everything another check. I did add in a little bit of thyme and some rubbed sage into these black eyed peas because that's what the bag said to do. We've got the oven set for the cornbread at 450 degrees. You want it nice and hot. Go ahead and put your cast iron skillets into that oven. That way the oil gets hot and that's going to fry the cornbread. To make our cornbread, we're going to add two eggs and about two and a half cups of cornmeal. This is self-rising cornmeal. And then start with just about a cup of buttermilk. You're going to want to add a little bit more, but you don't want to put everything in at first because you want to add buttermilk in until you get the texture that you're looking for, which is a texture that will allow you to pour it out of the bowl. So once you're stirring it and it sort of starts to settle down level on its own, starts to become sort of liquid, that's how you know it's just right. Be real careful pulling this stuff out of the oven. Remember this grease is at 450 degrees, so be very careful. You can see I am being very careful. Once you've got it up on the stove, it's time to put the batter into the cast iron pan and listen to that beautiful sizzle. Both of these um, are going to turn out probably about three quarters of the way full. I didn't have quite as much as I wanted, but I almost hit the nail on the head. This little last piece of cornbread in this small skillet never makes it to the meal. It always becomes an appetizer in my house. Get that cornbread in the oven and keep an eye on it. Times may vary, but typically about 20 to 30 minutes. Now we're going to add some buttermilk to a mix and some sour cream. About a cup of buttermilk and a couple dollops of sour cream. Incorporate that real well. We're cooking some breakfast pork chops. They're real thin and going to crisp up nicely. Add that buttermilk and sour cream mixture to your pork chops. Mix it up real good and let that soak for about 20 to 30 minutes. We can check the cornbread. Uh, if you can stick a toothpick in your cornbread and it comes out dry, that's how you know it's done. Don't let it overcook and don't undercook it. But this turned out just about perfect. I think the big loaf could have stood another three or four minutes, but you know what? It was still slamming. Check it out, coming out of there perfect. Got that golden look to it, man. That just makes me hungry looking at it right there. So what we wanna do next is we are going to just cover this lightly with a paper towel, and then we're gonna get into our pork chops. Put about a half an inch of oil into your pan, and we're gonna mix up half and half cornmeal to all-purpose flour, add in that lanes and some of the lanes blackening, decently heavy. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is incorporate all of that together to where it's evenly mixed and then be ready to rock and roll. Let's uncover that cornbread and get it split right down the middle, cutting both pieces in half. Leave the top side down after you get it cut. got your cornbread split it's time to get real with about a full stick of melted butter if cornbread represents gold I want my gold rich baby and I mean rich I got butter all over this thing maybe even a little overkill but you know what I don't care one bit I melted a stick of butter and so therefore I'm using a stick of butter and I ain't never heard nobody complain about cornbread having too much butter on it flip it over let it rest, let that butter fully soak into that bread. You know what? We got some extra. We're going to pour it all over the top. I ain't never wasted no butter. I want my gold covered in gold, baby. Y'all know how we like to do it over here at American Smoke. Then it's time to get that thing cut up, this appetizer cornbread and the main course cornbread. Cut it up into little wedges. Make sure that it's pretty because remember, you eat with your eyes first, and I'm going to tell you. I'm eating this cornbread with my eyes right now, and I'm going to have to eat a piece of it with my mouth. Now 
Next step is to get our grease somewhere between 350 and 400 and then get our pork chops out of that buttermilk and into the batter. I like to flip mine just sort of end over end until it has a dry feel to it and then just go ahead get that into the grease. This does not take long. Do not walk away from the grease. Uh, I can do two pork chops in the skillet at once with this and so uh, it's going to be about six pork chops total and I think it took me about 20 minutes to do all of them. Flip it over. Uh, once you get a nice golden color on the bottom, checking occasionally and just kind of just stare at it and just wait because this is the last step. Once you get into 145 plus on your pork chops, you know they're done and go ahead and pull them. Man alive, what a day of cooking this was. If there's any way to start your year off right, I feel like this is it right here. Y'all watch the whole process. We've got pork, apparently the hog roots forward. And so it's a symbol of progress. The cornbread is a symbol of gold and prosperity. The greens are dollars, the beans are pennies. All of these things are, you know, just urban legends that might bring you some good luck. I don't know. I know that I can always use a little bit more good luck. So I make this meal every year. I think this is about my eighth year. I think I started in about 2014, ninth year, something like that, 14, 15, somewhere in there. I've been making it every year. I've been getting better at it every year. And this is, uh, I look forward to this probably more than Thanksgiving dinner. I love this meal and I can't wait to get into this. I do need a fork. If y'all ain't from the South, y'all don't know about a lot of this stuff. We got grains, poke chops, cornbread, black eyed peas, some onion. Take you a little bit of pear relish, put that on top of your black eyed peas, just for that little extra something another on there. Man, all this stuff just looks phenomenal. I hope that y'all have a wonderful 2023. Let's give that, let's give that bite right there a shot. See what that do. Mm. Oh, Lord in heaven. This is one of those meals, it's like cooking a brisket. You spend all day doing it, you smell it all day. Now this is, this is no pepper sauce yet. This is just the greens. I'll be putting some pepper sauce on these in a minute. Mm. That's when you go in with this right here. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I buy that cornbread. Y'all like how much butter I put on that cornbread, didn't you? Oh, that's so good. Y'all comment down below. Let me know, you know, what do, what do you prepare on the first to bring you good luck? Look at that perfectly cooked, juicy fried pork chop. Perfect. Crunchy. Mmm. It's a good day, Tater. It's a good day. Some more of the onion. I'm not gonna sit here and eat this whole plate in front of y'all. What I do want to do is I want you to smash the like button. I want you to subscribe to the channel. I want you to make your 2023 a great year by cooking yourself this meal and make my 2023 a great year here at American Smoke by joining the channel and making it better. This is a heck of a day. It takes a lot of energy to do this, but it's totally worth it. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next year's video, 2023. We'll see you then. Smoke on.